Hey everybody, this video is the next in our series on mediation and moderation. And specifically, this video is going to cover serial mediation with two mediators and a covariate, which is similar to model six in process macro and SPSS. And this is our R video. So a quick model visualization of this type of mediation. And this is when you're interested in having um, one to two to three to four. So instead of a traditional mediation where you have X to M to Y, we're now predicting X to M1 to M2 to Y. I've included all these labels on here because if you ever take a look at the underlying code in the package, you'll see that I've called them these things so you know what I'm doing. <clears throat> and this is similar to the way that Hayes has labeled them as well. So, so there's consistency across, you know, what's going on in his books to what's happening in this uh, package. So what we're going to do is use X to predict M1, and that's going to give us our A1 path. And then X to predict M2, that's going to give us A2 with M1 in the equation, which gives us this D1, which is important. Then we're going to use X and M to predict Y, and X and M1 and M2 to predict Y. So we're ending up with four equations instead of the normal three, so that we can get all of these paths. And we'll end up with three indirect effects, X to M1 to Y, X to M2 to Y, and then the serial part of this, X to M1 to M2 to Y. And that's why the D1 is important here. Okay. So you'll get all three indirect effects and you can tell which mediations are happening. And what this data set is that I've included, it's in the examples folder along with the um, Word document I've got going here and the <clears throat> script is a data set that I've used before on this channel about um, evaluations, faculty evaluations. So we're going to say that the uh, what grade will you get in this course is going to be our X variable. And that's going to predict the overall course ratings. Because if students are getting good grades in a course, they tend to rate it higher, which is you know sort of unrelated to me as a teacher. <laughs> right. Um, but we think that that is mediated by what are the exams a good representation of the course material is M1. And are the grades or the grading system fair? That's M2. So we think that their overall grade is mediated by a grading set uh, predicting the course uh, overall course evaluation. So it kind of is like my overall grade is high, which leads me to believe the grading system is fair for the exams and for the class, which leads me to rate the course higher rather than just straight, I'm making a good grade, therefore this class is good. We're also going to control for what I think is an important variable, which is a question that we have that's, is this a course I wanted to take? So I teach statistics, clearly, that's why I have this channel, and uh, students rate this very poorly on my evaluations, and it's uh, negatively correlated usually with Y, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> positively correlated with Y. If they want to take it, you tend to get higher overall ratings because they're interested in the material. If you force them to take it because it's part of the course curricula for the major, um, they tend to rate you lower because they didn't want to be there in the first place. Okay. So got a good year evaluations include things like this wasn't as awful as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so I think that's an important thing to covary out. Now the covariate will be included in every single equation. So it's going to predict Y, but it's also going to predict M1 and M2 when X is involved. So the CV tags along for every equation here. So a quick thing on power, which is going to be at the bottom of our tutorial, is you remember you always have to figure out the number of predictors for the largest equation. And that is going to be the last equation in any mediation model, where we'll have the CV, so 1, X, that's 2, M1, 3, M2, which is 4. And another way that you can think about this is how many arrows are pointing in to Y. So we got four of them. We're going to have four predictors total. And then we could also decide what our um, <clears throat> overall R squared can be. Um, and so that is, that's not the power of the mediation. To do that, you really need to simulate this sort of design and test it. But at least we're powering the final and largest equations enough to find the effects that we think are there. So um, we're at least getting enough power to see if R squared is greater than zero. And then if the mediation, <clears throat> if the hypothesized mediation is there, likely it will also be powered. Unless it's very, very small. All right, so let's get started. 
So I've just pushed an update to GitHub on this. If you are just now joining us, um, there are several other videos that cover how to do simple mediation and simple moderation in lots of different ways. Um, I'm also working on the multi-level modeled mediation and moderation. It's just a little bit slower because I need to test it a little bit more, but it's getting close. So you should see that on the channel soon. Okay, I'm going to set my working directory real quick. Actually. Okay. And then, so I'm going to pull in, so you want to pull in this mediation file from wherever you have it saved on your computer. <clears throat> if I just do a quick view, I don't know what just happened there. Our studio thought I wanted something. <laughs> all right, so I can see that I have all of my questions. So there are actually 15 questions on this evaluation, but we're not using all of them. Now, if you have not installed this package or you need to update it because you are now watching our new video, so there's a new update, um, you'll need the DevTools library install, which allows you to install packages from GitHub. DevTools is in CRAN, so you could use the normal um, install.packages or click install and type dev tools. Uh, spelling is hard today. So, and then this would be the code that you would need to run, which you can also see on our readme. So this will update the package or install it for the first time for you. Next, we need to load the library. It does require um, several different packages that are built in. So ggplot for making graphs for moderation and diagram for simple mediation graphs. And then you can start right away. So this will do the entire analysis for us from data screening to the end. So it's just one function, which is really great. And then we'll walk through how you can read all the things that are saved in that function. So the function is mediation two, which gives you an indicator there are two mediators. Uh, simple mediation is mediation one. You wanna enter the name of the DV column. So please use the name of the column here in quotes as a character vector. So tell me where Y is. Tell me what X is, M1, then M2. Any covariates, so you could include more covariates if you're interested here. So you include covariates that are categorical or not, so this will handle both of those things. The name of the data frame, which I just called master here, with or without outliers. So we're actually going to say false here so that this video somewhat matches the um, SPSS version of this. So I excluded outliers in that video. So we're actually gonna ignore outliers, but you can run this with and without fairly easily. So that's the only thing you have to change if you wanted to leave them in per se. Um, either way, you'll get some diagnostic things back about those outliers. Next up is the number of bootstraps that you'd like. You just did a thousand tends to give me the same answer as the 5,000 in Hayes' uh, process macro, but feel free to go up and down, more up than down, and the confidence level that you want for your indirect effect confidence intervals. So let's go. Okay. This is the slow part because you are running bootstraps, so you're running a 1,000 regression equations um, and all the data screening. So this is the part we have to kind of wait depending on the um, processing speed of your computer. Okay, so it's all saved. Um, you can look at the structure of any of these files. It's a list um, and it'll kind of show you what's happening. And these will get large if your data sets are large because it does save the data for you. Um, but remember, if you're ever trying to figure out where the heck everything is, you can use str to show you the structure. However, it will look crazy. <laughs> so um, generally I would tell you to just kind of start typing. So saved dollar sign and see what all the dollar sign options are. And so that's where you can find all the pieces that you're looking for if you can't remember what the options are. You can always come back to these examples as well. Okay. So I said I didn't want outliers. So, but let's just look at what that meant. So if you view the saved data set, come over here, I can scroll. And now this is every piece of the data set, not just this includes the outliers. I'll click on total out here and sort that descending. So when I said I wanted to exclude outliers, it will exclude everybody who has two or more of these options. Okay. So it's going to say um, Mahalanobis distance 
and use the cutoff score based on the number of predictors in the equation. It's going to give you leverage values, which are like how much influence people have over the slope. Cooks, which is a measure of discrepancy and leverage, so slope and how far away you are. And then the total column here is literally the total. So you could actually count how many outliers you excluded if you were trying to track um, how many were excluded. It will exclude them based on two strikes you're out. So anyone who has two or more indicators was excluded. So what we could do, just so that we can tr kind of see what's going on, is calculate the number of rows that are in the data sets that Lots of dollar signs are, or no, here we go, sum, sorry, sum, the number of rows in the data set where total out is um, greater than or equal to two. Okay. So it excluded 151 participants. Okay. Now, if we looked at those people, so let me pull this back up, what it's really excluding in this particular data set, I don't know that I would actually do that. Um, because what it's actually doing is it's excluding people whose scores are odd. So the pattern of scores are unusual. So here the uh, expected grade in the course is particularly low for some of these. Um, and then maybe the course, scroll back over to 15, the rating of the course is high. So people are doing poorly but they like the course, um, which is kind of an unusual combination. So it tends, to, it tends to highlight the extremes of the distribution. So patterns of scores that tend to be on the edges. So um, these are kind of low while the other part's high. Uh, on faculty evals, they tend to be all low or all high. So things that are kind of mixed are what we might consider outliers. All right. So let's look at our additivity here. So we're gonna walk through our assumptions. So additivity is no multicollinearity. So we're mainly just concerned again um, that none of these predictors are above 0.9 um, you do actually expect suppression where it's about 0.7 for the correlation that's the purpose of mediation is suppression so for this I always just make sure that none of them are so correlated that I, the regression result might be kind of iffy so we do have a particularly high correlation between three to four but not too surprising since they're both about grading systems and um, otherwise everything looks okay For linearity, we want everybody to be pretty close to the line between two and two, and you would think this is made up data because that looks really nice. For normality, we want it to be centered over zero and approximately even on each side, and that also looks pretty good, so pretty normal um, standardized residuals. However, this bad boy, not so pretty. So um, I would say that we have some problems with homogeneity because we're not centered around zero in each direction, so it's from two to four both ways. Homoscedasticity is kind of okay in this one, except that there's more clustering over here than the tail over here. So I would say we have problems with both. So slightly uh, heterogeneic, slightly heteroscedastic. Um, we have a very large sample, 3,700 participants minus our outliers. And so we're probably protected. It's robust against some of these violations, but this would be something to report that the data were not um, totally good. Okay. All right. So let's view a summary of what's going on. So the first model we're going to get is just C. And so if I wanted to talk about C here, I could say that um, overall grade predicts um, we're predicting course, uh, overall course evaluation. We would say B equals, we pull B here from the estimates column, so 0 0.41. Now, if you're watching this uh, with the SPSS video, there are a different number of outliers, so these are going to be slightly different effects, but we should get similar results. Uh, we'd report T here, so the degrees of freedom would be the second degree of freedom here. Um, the degrees of freedom residual, or the second one on F here, they're the same thing. And we'd say it's 17.69, and P is less than 0 0.001. Okay. I could also report the adjuster or covariate here, where I could say that I wanted to take predicts overall course, 
and we do the same thing. 0 0.37 T3588. And the big thing I'm going to warn you about here as I do these, I won't do all of them, is to watch the degrees of freedom. Because for each one, that T degrees of freedom is going to be slightly different. Now, with this large of a sample, they all approximate a Z distribution. But um, if you're reporting these and writing it up, the T degrees of freedom are going to be different for each one. Now, for the A1 path, let's see what's happening here. And we're just going to talk specifically about those paths now. So A1 path is X predicting M1. So we would say that the overall grade predicts um, M1 is exam fairness. And so I talk about this here, 0.45. So degrees of freedom are the same here because there's still only two predictors. Ooh, how did that happen? That was kind of cool. Not what I wanted, <laughs> 3588. I've never made the square root symbol before, but it's kind of neat. Um, 26. Okay. And we will talk about, we could also type up Q2, Q12 here. Okay. Let's look at A2. So the A2 path is X predicting M2. The D21 path is M1 predicting M2. So we're going to say X here, which is Q15, predicts um, M2, which is overall grading fairness. So my overall grade predicts grading fairness. So as I get a higher score in the class, I think the grading is fair, um, which is not too surprising because if I'm doing well, clearly the grading, grading is fair. So here's our second degree of freedom that's changed now. They're not changing by much, just one or two, but they are different. So 8.77, T plus 0.01. And then now we're going to say M1, which is exam fairness, or how well do the exams represent the course material, predicts grading fairness. Ah, oh, I cannot type tonight, guys. <laughs> B equals, and that's going to be this line. 0 0.56 T3587. This is 1434, P less than 0.01. And then we can again talk about Q12. Now, for this part, we're going to get the B1 path, B1, which is M1 predicting Y with X and M2 in the equation. Okay, that's kind of implied here. And so that's going to be exam fairness predicts overall course grade, oh, overall course rating, sorry, B equals. Uh, that's Q3 here. So 0 0.58 T with 3586 equals 3012 P less than 0.01, which I will be sick of typing here because these are so large that everything is significant except X here in a second. B2 is M2 predicting Y with X and M1 in the equation. So now we have um, overall grading fairness predicts overall course rating. I'll just do this down here, B equals, that's Q4 here. 0 0.41 T of 35.86 is 1801, P less than 0.01. Last one, C prime path, which is X predicting Y, is now not significant. So um, overall grade does not predict overall course. And that is B2. 
B is basically less than 0 0.01 if you want to do it that way. T3586, because B is not really zero. It gets tricky when you have that many decimals since uh, psych people don't tend to use scientific notation. And we're going to do P equals, if I can type here, 0.944. And so that's how we interpret it and write up all of those. In this mini predictors, I'd put them all in a giant table and just talk about them. Now, remember that the total effect is the effect is C. So we've already found the total effect up here. But here it is repeated just in case you wanted that. The direct effect is C prime. So we can see that there's a big difference between C and C prime here. The indirect effect number one is X to M1 to Y. And so that's 0.256. Then the indirect effect 2 is x to m2 to y. So smaller, 0.05. Then the indirect 3 is x to m1 to m2 to y. And that's 0.10. So what's happening, let me pull this picture back over here, is the in first indirect effect is x to m1 to y. So it's a1 times b1. Then it's x to m2 to y, so a2 times b2. Then last, x to m to m to y, which is a1 times d21 times b2. So um, you get three different mediation effects here. And what those measure is the difference between c and c prime. So it like partials out where the mediation is occurring. Since these are all on the same scale, I can probably compare them to each other. Um, all these questions are on the same scale. So really, the majority of the effect is through um, what we said was exam fairness. So really, the overall grade uh, is to the overall course is mediated by exam fairness. Um, it's also mediated by overall course grading rules, and it's kind of they're kind of mediating each other as well. So if I am making a good grade, I tend to think the exams are fair which leads me to think that the overall course grading system is fair, which leads me to rate the course higher. That's kind of what I'm saying. Now to report those, we also want to boot, look at the bootstrap results. So your bootstrap results is in how you can tell that my code is working correctly should match um, the indirect effects that you just saw. So we're doing pretty good there, but you can also get the standard error here, which is useful. And there's two ways to see this next part. So I can just do save dollar sign boot CI and it'll show me all three of them at once, which can be kind of confusing to read, but you look for the little dollar signs here. Or I can do save boot CI and as you're typing, pick one of them. So saved boot CI dollar sign and then it'll show you all of them. So if you include a categorical X variable, you're going to have even more of these. So let's do the first one. So what I could say is the indirect effect of um, exam fairness between overall grade and overall course, which is a lot to say, but that indirect equals, and we'd look at indirect one, so it's 0 0.26. And then I could report the standard error, which we got from our boot results. So 0 0.02, rounding up. And then I could say the 95% CI was, and that's where this piece comes in. Unfortunately, they're all kind of all over the place, but I'd rather give you all of the output from this rather than less so that you have it yourself. Um, 0.22. To 0.29. And that's how we could report all three of them. So we'd kind of have to look for each piece in a slightly different place, but mainly the two places are saved boot results, which tell me the next indirect is 0.05, and the um, saved boot confidence interval. Right. So the next one would be 0.03 to 0.05, so also greater than zero. And then the last one, 0.08 to 0.12. So how do I know if mediation occurs? Okay. Basically, you would have repeat. So 
So I don't know if mediation occurs. We say if uh, the CI does not include zero. Okay, that basically means that they're both positive or they're both negative, but there's no zero in there. So we would say all three indirects show mediation effects. So all three of them um, are mediated. So all three paths, um, because none of them cross zero. Clearly the first one is the largest. Well, it's in with power. So I'm gonna use the PWR library to find this. You can also use G power. And I estimated R squared at 0 0.12. And so that's R squared of the last equation. Let's see what it really was. So I'm gonna scroll back up here and look at model four. My R squared is actually 0.66. So I'm like way underestimating here. Um, but if you didn't know, let's say that's a good medium to large effect. This F eta thing translates R squared into Cohen's F. What you wanna do is fill in degrees of freedom model, which is the number of predictors in the equation. So that's four for our four predictors, um, excluding the intercept. So it's um, X, M1, M2, and RCV. V is gonna be null, but that, cause that's what we're trying to figure out. F2, here's our F eta that we calculated. Um, I'm gonna use 0.05 and 0.8 but you should justify your choices for alpha and power. It tells me that I need 87 people for V, but remember add U and V together. So we need about 93 participants to um, run this model with an R squared of 0.12. And you'll see if you do this in G power, it matches. But let's say we actually knew that it was gonna be 0.6. This seems like a very large number to estimate. Um, I would be suspicious of how large this is, but this is actually real data. So. Um, these are heavily correlated items. Okay. So let's see what it tells me I would need. Okay, it tells me I need nine plus four, which is 13 people. Um, don't do that. <laughs> it would be hard to meet the assumptions of normality with 13 people. So I might say I don't need the 3,700 participants that I have, I just have them. Um, but I might go with a larger number because it's always better to overpower because you're never quite sure if the effect size is quite right, then to underpower a situation. So that is our so serial mediation. Hope you enjoy, because let me know if you have any problems with it. Um, working on three-way moderation and um, multi-level models for all of these things coming up soon until school starts and then it'll be crazy but we're gonna keep running this series until we kind of run out of example models to do so please like and comment and let me know what models you would like to see most thanks